Hey guys, so this video is going to be talking about how the centrifugal switch works on uh, electric motors. And this, uh, what this switch does, it activates and deactivates the starting windings in a lot of electric motors. You see there's also a capacitor here too that works in conjunction with the switch for starting and uh, setting the phasing which determines the uh, rotation too. The purpose for starting windings, not all motors have it, but sometimes motors will need a little extra torque in order to start and as you see in the intro that sound of the switch is very recognizable uh, especially after you shut a motor off and you hear it like click and start making a rug a rubbing sound so uh, we're going to talk briefly about how it uh, works and we've got a schematic to look at too which uh, shows everything in a very basic format it don't it doesn't even have the capacitor in it but it just shows how the switch and the wiring works just to give you an idea so this is a one and a half horsepower Dayton motor. It can be wired up for 120 or 240 single phase. And right now it's currently wired up for 120 so I can just plug it in on a regular wall socket. So this switch is it's very simple and so right now the contacts of the switch are closed because you'll see on the schematic it says normally closed so in its normal state the contacts are making connections so when you plug it in not only do the run windings get power but so do the starting windings. And once the motor comes up to speed from centrifugal force, these weights will swing apart, overcome the tension of the spring, and allows this lever to move here, breaking the, the contact down here. So let's look at the contact real close so you can see how it works. You see the contacts right here? It's copper, but it looks kind of burnt. You can see how it makes contact. Reminds me of a set of points of a old vehicle engine or a lawnmower engine. Same principle, it's just a switch. Uh, you can see how these weights work. Right now, until you hear it click, you'll see this go in like this. As soon as this goes in, that breaks the connection on the starting windings. Then it's just the uh, run windings. So. And that disengages it. That's what that rubbing sound is, is this arm rubbing on this piece of plastic here. So you, you can hear the motor makes a different sound until it, it kicks in going up to speed and disengages. Now I'm going to disconnect the fire. Then once the RPM is dropped down below, the springs overcome the centrifugal force and it makes the connection again, which doesn't matter because the fire is off. So this could actually be considered a normally open switch because while the motor is working, you know, the contacts are open. I label it as normally closed because when the motor is not in use, the contacts are closed. Uh, so now let's go look at the diagram. Okay, so this is just a very rough diagram of a electric motor. You see right here, this is the shaft with the uh, armature, which in this case it's actually called a stator because there's no windings on the armature itself on the shaft it spins because this is an induction type motor so you have two windings here this is the run in conjunction with this run and these are both hooked in parallel as you see uh, these also show just a basic ground on all the coils going to the ground of the power source and this is a switch that would turn the power on and off which in the case of this example would be me plugging the motor in and unplugging it <laughs> this would be closed like this would be down here making a connection right here so as soon as this is closed power goes to the run windings and down here it makes a connection to the starting winding like I said there's a, there's a capacitor that would be in here too to set the phasing and aid in the starting then as soon as the motor develops enough RPM this opens like you see here and it just it shuts the power off to the starting windings and the motor still has its power going to the run windings. So I hope this makes sense. Uh, I think once you look at it like this and you see how the switch works it'll kind of make sense. But this is the switch that you see on the front that's operated by the weights on the, the shaft of the motor. It's a centrifugal starting winding switch.
Uh, something else I wanted to note, this will also spark when it breaks the connection. So if you're using a motor or something in an environment where there's explosive gases or something, you also have to take this in consideration. You'll see it here. But it only spark on the startup because there's no power after you shut it off. So the spark is from the switch disengaging the starting lines. But there's a lot of different types of motors. This is a very common setup on a lot of single phase motors. Just about any time you see a motor with a capacitor, it might have the, I call it a wart, like on the side of it. It usually going to have some type of centrifugal switch in this. Uh, there are a lot of induction motors that do not have uh, a starting windings on the switch or a capacitor like this. And it just works off the main run windings. Um, three phase motors, I've never seen one with the starting windings like this because they work completely different. I've never seen a capacitor on a three phase motor. But for single phase motor, this is an extremely common setup. You'll see this a lot. This is even used on the older style washer and dryer motors too. So anytime you hear that distinctive sound when you shut it off, it makes it click and like a rubbing sound, this is what's going on inside it. Well guys, thanks for watching. If you got any questions or comments, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So, Thanks for watching guys. We'll catch you on the next one.